SP and OE, strategic planning and operational excellence. Any company is built on some values and ethics. Any business is built on values and ethics. And then you derive a mission. These are all very fundamentals, right? You derive a vision, mission for the company. Then you have strategic approaches. You have some strategic objectives for the organization and you manage those objectives. And this portion is called a strategic planning. I've just put this a very, very simple model of excellence. You might adopt, this is only an indicative model of excellence and you can adopt anything that befits your organization. But these are all some pointers for you to build the model of excellence. In operational excellence, this is strategic planning. In operational excellence, safety, typical manufacturing. If it is any transaction in other type of industries, it can be a different. Safety, world-class workplace. Workplace is so important. Enable business excellence. So world-class workplace is so important. And this is what we call it as preparing the pitch before you play the game, right? Feel that equipment effectiveness is so important to enable excellence in your organization. Quality at source, the best in class quality is absolutely required. Time and again, inventory management is so important. Inventory management is so important. In So these, any manufacturing typically focuses on these five areas, starting from safety to the workplace, to the equipments, to the quality and inventory. And now you need to ensure that people are given because each of these pillars have their blocks. Each of these pillars have their blocks. And what are these blocks? These we call the tools. And people must be equipped with those tools. That's why we said three things are important. T, S, M. And you can elaborate this TSM. Tool set, skill set, and mindset. To ensure that you give. And if you ensure that, then you can get customer delight and customer wants right product quality cost and delivery. And the result is business excellence, which is growth, profit, and stability. What we generally miss out while we are okay with this, we generally miss out continuous improvement. Because each of them cannot be the best in class to start with. Some might be at this point A, you have to take it to point B. From point B, you'll have to take it to point C. That is what is continuous improvement. In quality, people are fancied between continuous improvement and continual improvement. Uh, whichever you like it, you can call it. Both are required, okay? Step change as well as gradual change. Learning and development is very important in across these pillars. Now, this is called strategic planning and operational excellence. Please make sure learning and development, assessment and review, and continuous improvement are important components, these three dimensions of this entire model of, model of excellence. We will break down this learning and development, assessment and review, and continuous improvement in further slides. Let's talk about safety. So, in safety assurance, suppose if we have to talk about these three components, what are these three components? Learning and development, assessment and review, and continuous improvement projects. Now we need to pick up for our organizations. It is not written, it's not a prescription for every company, okay? but. You should not miss out this. That's why what we do is, generally when we start this excellence journey, we said, start with safety Gemba walk. Safety Gemba walk. What is the safety Gemba walk? As much as we implement 5S, that is the world-class workplace, we tell you form a team of four or five people, walk across your organization and identify unsafe practices. It's, I'll tell you the power of teamwork. 
it's phenomenal the power of teamwork is phenomenal it's better first what is not identified cannot be improved okay so this is the power of teamwork okay so first thing is learning and development we give a debrief on give a brief on people about the basics of fire safety the electrical safety forklift usage unsafe practices etc start with certain criteria then these are all like uh, it might lead to near misses okay that sort of it might lead to near misses see in safety we talk about near misses if you ignore near misses then it will become what do you call this uh, in in saint goben we used to call tf1 tf2 and all that which means that it lead to an injury an injury is also like an injury where the person actually without medical intervention you know take the safety aid on himself and do but with medical intervention but then returns to work on the same shift and it can also medical intervention but doesn't return to work in the same shift and then you know it can be up to fatal levels okay there are various gradations in this safety but unsafe acts if you keep capturing somebody not wearing helmet that's also an incident okay unsafe uh, act somebody not wearing mask these days right it's also an unsafe you see now learning and development you choose your components here to start with start with something simple but total employee involvement is important then assessment and review it is important that after that they have taken photos related to the unsafe practices okay you need to review the closure of this and start revisiting your standards so that you can upgrade your standards and then continuous improvement projects from there you can even evolve projects and same thing and this is where we need to build it brick by brick and all these components then it will have a step by step procedure then it will have an assessment and review then it will take it to the next level of improvement let's take our easy example world class workplace how world class workplace okay we need to do continuous improvement and learning and development across all pillars world class workplace learning and development what is the learning and development that we will do what is the assessment that we will do and what is the continuous improvement projects that we will do i am explaining the very basic simple things that we need to do to start with in learning and development we need to talk to people about how to conduct what is 5s of course what is visual control systems and what is the importance of taking daily pledges how do you do daily audits monthly audits what are the do's and don'ts what is one point lesson and bkw is blitz kaizen workshops we will talk about in 5s i'll go into the depth of this blitz kaizen workshops here's the thing you need to be very clear to craft this in your organization the entire thing what we are talking about reaches a people till the value adder level who is the value adder the workman who actually works on the machine then these are all the things that need to be without assessment and review people will go back to what is comfortable and convenient when it will collapse assessment and review you need to have you need to monitor whether the pledge is taken or not adherence will trend will help in that what are the daily audit trends sometimes we do what is called focused audits also cleaning schedule adherence gemba walk observation list okay gemba walk on fivers also we do and action review sheets so we need to be very clear about in fivers this is what when we engage with the clients we understand the client and take them slowly step by step into all these modules and finally start doing continuous improvement projects and continuous improvement projects we say for example 
with an objective zero spillages and leakages these projects will ensure that you have world class workplace okay zero spillages and leakages it's one of the example of a project that helps in world class workplace okay let me give another example of equipment effectiveness of course continuous improvement and learning development in this in equipment if you find an abnormality we put what is called as red tagging this red tagging i will cover in five s modules again okay we talk about clicta okay in problem solving we will talk about clicta for those who are new here just to explain this clicta it is cleaning in machines you know cleaning is important lubrication is important inspection tightening or testing they call it adjustment or alignment they say so this clicta is very important you need to teach people about these things in the machine and there's something called as mmc okay this is the word that we had coined so it's unlikely people will know it's called my machine campaign my machine campaign in typical manufacturing if every person in my machine campaign they say this is my machine okay and um, they take care of various aspect of machine the fibers of machines the clitter of machines the tissue hosting of machines okay the production productivity quality cost of the machines delivery that is the rate at which you produce it everything you build the ownership correct that's called my machine campaign so that the zone leaders become and the group becomes responsible for that machine so these are some indicative learning and development that we can give similarly assessment and review we can do breakdown trend and analysis downtime trend the point that i'm trying to communicate here is we need to be very clear about how we are taking this journey through. we need to be very clear about how we are taking the, and we need to be very clear about what are the components even before we start implementing in the company we need to be very clear about what modules are required for that company and how do you do assessment and review of those tools or once it's implemented and how do you continuously improve spare parts management in machine maintenance all this comes right continuous so we also do breakdown reduction projects downtime reduction projects and there are various components you can bring it here uh, in tpm the we also do mttr mean time to repair and mean time between failures now now suppose if the washing machine keeps breaking down every month for example the first month it broke down it took 2 days to repair the second month it broke down it took 2 hours to repair the third month it broke down it took 15 minutes to repair forget about the nature of the problem but first month it took 2 days to repair the second month it took 2 hours to repair on the third month it took 15 minutes to repair so what is the mean time to, mean means average okay what is the difference between mean and average they are all same okay both are same okay mean time to repair means what is the mean time to repair between 2 days 2 hours and 15 minutes what is the mean time to repair you have to add this and divided by 3 that is the mean time to repair so any machine that you have you just capture the time it takes to repair and whenever it breaks down what is the time to repair add all these times and divide by the number of breakdowns that you have now this is empty tr mean time to repair mean time between failure means mean time between failure means first month on 15th it failed the second month on second it failed the third month on 30th it failed what is the mean time between failure so between the first month and second month it took 15 days then it took 30 days then probably it took 40 days so it's a mean time between failures correct 
mean time between failures but the time will be number of breakdowns minus 1 okay number of breakdowns minus 1 for example two breakdown you will have only one time between that right <laughs> so that is mean time between failures so the two components are very important we have to reduce so what should be reduced so m mttr should be reduced or increased mttr should be reduced or increased mean time to repair it should be reduced or increased okay so continuous improvement project can be in breakdown reduction project which means mean time between failure can be less or mean time to repair can be less downtime reduction project efficiency improvement or spare parts management any other this is just an indicative i have given so similarly for quality assurance if you need to do this learning and development can be in complaint analysis 7 qc2s yw analysis 5w19 spsm structured problem solving methodology 4m pareto graphs and all that okay assessment and review you can have you can assess your complaint register trend all that we've been doing product quality trend and analysis and stuff like that okay continuous improvement projects can be external complaint reduction project i'm going a little faster because i've explained in first two pillars slowly and this pillar you have to craft your own tools for your organization that's a whole subject but it has to there has to be a learning and development there has to be an assessment review there has to be a continuous improvement okay this pq in one of the company they call poor quality okay poor quality reduction project okay. and re dyeing reduction is uh, again in uh, it is uh, textile industry okay inventory management again learning and development inventory analysis abc analysis kanban systems mok etc there are a lot of tools here and then various trends in analysis you can see of inventory non moving slow moving and all that and then you can have continuous improvement projects the the point that i'm again trying to communicate is please have a learning and development crafted very clearly right from training identification training calendar skill matrix and all that do an assessment and review of what has been taught what has been implemented look at the trends to see whether the learning has and implementation has yielded results do continuous improvement projects wip inventory reduction fgrm and all that spare parts also consumable inventories in some case here we come to the interesting kaizen portion of it teach people about uh, various uh, uh, you know jargons in kaizen because you know that's how you know this is the language of improvement right so uh, there's nothing like uh, you need not be averse to it because if you have to if you have to work in north india you must know hindi right if you have to go to china you must learn chinese to some extent so if you want to do kaizen you should know kaizen language moda mura mori the eight ways the process flow activity mapping ecrs eliminate combine rearrange simplify and all that right and then we can see kaizen trend and analysis we can review all that kaizen projects review analysis zone wise potential improvements and all that learning and development it's very important for us to track this in learning and development you need to teach people how to identify training needs you see you have in learning and development itself you love to teach people how to make a training calendar how to plot a skill matrix how to build in how to teach people and bring in skill flexibility train the trainer programs and all that okay and there are various things that you can assess and review training identification list training calendar on various programs training plan for actual training attendance and all that 